my mom gave me up when I was eight. And my dad, like literally after my dad died, my mom could not afford to take care of me, so she gave me up. But I chose to keep my son because I wanted to give him a chance. So I just wanted my child to feel love, love that I've never felt, especially from a parent. In 2019, I think December, I found out I was pregnant, my first pregnancy. And then when I went to find out the sex, it was literally at 18 weeks. They were like, uh, the lady was just like, I don't know, something don't seem right, but come back at 20 weeks or 22 weeks, you know? And I went home not thinking nothing about it. The lady who was doing my ultrasound was like, I don't know if you know why you were sent here, but um, you know, they don't, they can't find the right side of your baby's heart. Yeah, the right side. And I was like, what, did that, what does that mean, you know? So my son had hypoplastic right heart syndrome. So the part of his heart that's responsible for pumping uh, blood into his lung did not develop. So, um, yeah, or uh, like if you have him, most babies with his heart condition does not live for more than two or three days naturally. Yeah, it just went downhill from there. It's kind of, it was like a lot because they bring out like this diagram of the heart, you know, and they show me like, you know, this is what's going on with your son. You know, these, these are your options, like abortion. I know like at the time, I think she said like, I can still go to Illinois and have an abortion because I think the cutoff of Missouri is 22 weeks, but Illinois is either 24 or 25 weeks. So she's like, do you want me to make that call? Like right there and then, that same day. <laughs> I was like, no, today. Um, I think though the pressure for abortion was real in my case, but that's just me, just because the doctors were aware that I don't have any family. So, you know, the doctor was like, just really think about your choices and what you really want to do. But I had to like really think about it. At the hospital that day, do I want these doctors to make this call to this other doctor in Illinois and send me over there for an abortion? Or do I want to go home and think about it? I was at the hospital for a while. Like I just felt like I was stuck. I didn't know what to do because it was like, okay, on the one hand, I'm like, you know, things are not even working with these men. It's just a lot of drama. You know, I'm not going to lie. I stayed there and like, yeah, if I have an abortion, I get rid of every connection with these men. It's over. It's done for. I don't have to worry about him no more. And from there, I was able to call them like almost every day if I wanted to. And even sometimes overnight, I will be by myself like two or three o'clock in the morning. And I would text and be like, hey. And then it may be her or Miss Jamie. Miss Jamie will be like, I'll be like, hey, Miss Teresa. And she'll be like, it's Jamie. Or sometimes I'll be like, hey, Jamie. And she'll be like, it's Teresa. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah, that's how that went. The first week was very rough, but before I left the hospital, I was sure that I wanted to keep my child. But yeah, Jamie and Miss Teresa was like always, always, always calling me, texting me, checking on me. If I could be pregnant with my son forever, I would choose that. I would choose the discomfort, the, the loneliness, everything, because that means he was alive and he was with me. Even when I had him and he was like, you know, hardly breathing the next day. Like literally, I watched my son for 27 hours dying slowly. Like, you know, his little feet were turning blue and his little hands were getting cold. 
and I knew that my son was dying. Like, it's important for him to live. It's important for him to come to this world and have his own experience. And I did not feel like I could make that choice to take a life. Like, I did not give him his life. God gave him this, this life. It's not my place to take it away. I wanted to make the right choice, not the easy choice. So I did what was right for me. I did what was right for my son. It is difficult, it really is. Still is, but you know, every day is a good day, I say. If bad things happen, it's true, but it's still a good day. It's still a good day. Oh, the most rewarding thing about having Jackson is getting to see him. Like, actually, if I would have had an abortion, I would have never seen my son, hold my son, smell my son, have an actual two days with my son. So that is, to me, the most rewarding thing is having to see him, hold him, you know, like I got to nurse him. I couldn't have done that if I had an abortion. You know, I got to change a diaper. I couldn't have done that if I had an abortion. So, you know, those little things were very, very rewarding. So I just wanted to make sure, like, I gave my son everything that I could. And it was just, it was tough, but I'm glad that I did. Like, I chose life for him. I had two beautiful days with my son at the hospital when I had him. Um, unfortunately, he literally, like, he died literally at the 49th hour after I had him. Difficult, yes, but now I look back at the pictures and I am glad that I chose him. I feel like what the best thing that I've gotten from here is the emotional support. Knowing that even if somebody doesn't understand, somebody is there. And I can call and be angry. I can call and be sad. I can call and be happy. It doesn't matter what my mood was. Somebody was always there to help me pick up the pieces and to help me live in that moment. So I think for me, that's the most important. Like just not feeling alone and really feeling supported in all of my seasons. It doesn't matter, it really didn't matter what the season was. I could always call and talk to somebody. And I think like any pregnant woman, it doesn't even matter how big your family or how much love you have, but to have somebody that's always there, that's understanding and that's not judging, you know? And I, I appreciate that because sometimes I was crying so much I can't even get the words out, but I could text, so uh, I appreciate that.